I've been working on my dream game project for a bit over a year now. Since the start of development, things have drastically changed several times. Over time, we become better at our crafts, and as a result, we can produce higher quality creations. If you're new around here, I am the creator of Boundless Games, which is currently developing our first major commercial project, Monster Tribe. Monster Tribe is an open-world monster taming RPG that offers both an expansive island to explore, gathering resources from, along with a strategic team-based battle and combat wrapped up in a neat story about the issues between nature versus technology and the greed of efficiency our modern-day society struggles with. Before we get into the meat of what saved my game from disaster, I'd like to discuss today's video sponsor, Demo Creator. If you have never heard of Demo Creator, this is a brilliant piece of software that allows you to both record footage of your screen and also edit videos quickly and easily. The software can do a lot more than just cropping clips and cutting them together. From features like recording your favorite video games with a click of a button, to denoising your imported audio, watermarking your content, visual aids, captions, transitions, facial recognition, a drag and drop green screen filter, and so much more to uncover. I'm really just scratching the surface of what can be done with the software, but personally I found this program extremely easy to pick up and start using after a few minutes of looking into the features. This ad segment was actually created using Demo Creator, so if you want to make content like this or go way above and beyond, make sure to check the first link in the description to start using Demo Creator for free. So. What is it that saved my game from crumbling into the heaping pile of unfinished prototypes and poorly launched indie games? If I could tell fellow developers one piece of advice, it would be to understand the importance of reflecting and what kind of purpose it serves in being a healthy creator. Now, this goes far past just game development. Most creative endeavors will have similarities in how those journeys develop, but since this is a devlog, I'll make sure to approach this idea from a developer's standpoint. A few months back, I had started to pick up some traction here on YouTube and saw that my work was finally being seen and appreciated. Long were the days of uploading a video to get a few clicks and give me a keep it up comment. As the channel and game grew, my goals and aspirations adapted. I constantly overlooked my achievements with looking at what's to come. As my development skills improved, I saw every flaw the game still had, and as the YouTube channel advanced, I fantasized on what it would be like to reach that next big milestone. Don't get me wrong, constantly working on yourself and trying to achieve greater goals is just a part of what makes us human and how we are able to advance. However, I had spent a long time only looking forward and never backwards. I stopped seeing that kid who was just trying to pass 100 subscribers and was then obsessed with growth and results. If growth slowed down, I would doubt anything and everything I was doing. If aspects of the game didn't match my impossible standards, it was seen as a failure in my eyes. If I never left this constant state of future observing and comparison to others, eventually I would have either called it quits and given up on the project altogether, or would have just turned the entire experience into an anxiety-infested disaster. The point I'm trying to make is to remember to pace your goals and don't forget to look back at your journey so far. Don't get too caught up on what others are doing. Understand that this is your own unique experience of life and whatever you manage to achieve is dependent on your circumstances and abilities. I now use reflection as a method of motivation. When I find myself in a rut of constantly viewing my project in a certain way, I will just take some time to reflect and look back at how far I've come, how much I've learned, and how lucky I am to make it to where I am today. I understand that my achievements can only speak for myself, but just remember that you set your goals. You set your vision on what success is. You are the only one to keep yourself accountable seeing if you are moving in the right direction for what needs to be achieved in your life. Make your goals clear. Appreciate every step of the way. The good, the bad, the steady, and the crazy. Every person is the main protagonist in one story. Decide how you want your story to unfold and be proud of where you've gotten to so far. Focus on the story that's being created and forget comparing your achievements to others around you. Be the best you can be. Hopefully you guys can understand where I'm coming from on this, but now let's take a quick look into what the development team has been up to over the past few weeks creating Monster Drive. Okay, first up is a whole ton of new particle effects. 
I redid the dust particles for the 20th time, added some particles flowing through the air in all of the different locations, and made sure to create some new texturing to the floors in each zone. You got pollen blowing around in the clearing, flowing embers in the burnt forest, and some small debris falling from the cave ceilings. I believe the ground texturing looks much better than what it used to be, but again, I will make sure to add even more elements to the environment in the future to make this island feel very much alive and realistic. Next up was adding interactable indicators for every type of interaction in the game. You got wood chopping, mining, fishing, talking to NPCs, shops, interacting with objects, and even saving the game. Well, that's not exactly the only purpose to this magical totem. While the structure does save your game's files, it also acts as our form of a PC box from the Pokemon games. You'll be able to use DNA you find in battle to unlock new monsters, swap your current team members, and change their attacks as they level up. Fusions will also be included in the save totem menu, but unfortunately we are still working hard at this feature to add to the playtest in the upcoming weeks. If you guys were around when the Monster Tribe Kickstarter was live, you should remember that we said we would be working on a playable version of the game for some of our more dedicated backers of the project. If you back the campaign at a $30 Canadian price point or above, then you will have access to the closed alpha that launched today. I've posted a secret Kickstarter announcement to give those backers instructions on how they can download this alpha and start testing the game. Being a part of a secret Discord channel on the Balance Games Discord for talking about game balancing, overall gameplay experience, finding bugs, and just having fun playing and streaming the game in its current state. However, if you were not around for the Kickstarter, well, depending on how many of you clutter my DMs with messages on trying to get into the closed alpha, I will try and work out some kind of smaller payment model to get people in on future installments of the next few months of the closed playtest. We're aiming to have this game published for the masses on Steam, quarter 1, 2022, and Nintendo Switch, hopefully quarter 2, 2022. If getting early access to a secret version of the game sounds like something you want to be a part of, just send me a DM and I'll see if I can make some kind of paid arrangement for this in the near future. I've seen a few games do this to help fund their project throughout the game's development, so I definitely wouldn't be opposed to this idea. The alpha will have a completely separate world map and story from the main campaign, so you won't be spoiling the real game by jumping in on the private playtest. There have been many other things we have been working on to get this alpha playtest done for our testers. I'll continue to keep you guys in the loop with future Monster Tribe devlogs, but until then, I'm going to shoot a few monsters on screen that I've been working on over the past few live streams I do here on YouTube. The community has been a great help in shaping the monsters into what they become. Comment down below some interesting ideas for monsters I might be able to create on future streams. By the way, most of you aren't subscribed, nor have you wishlisted Monster Tribe on Steam. So yeah, it would mean a lot to me if you did those things. Oh. Also, we now have the Monster Tribe Bestiary fully added on the Boundless Games Discord server in a separate channel. You can view the monsters' biographies and join the community in voting on your favorite monster. It's been a blast voice chatting with you guys on the Discord when I have some downtime, and our community is really growing into something I am proud to be a part of, so thank you everyone for everything you have been doing to make life a little more interesting, and I'll see you guys in the next devlog video.